Earthquake researcher warns of mega tsunami hitting the west coast. What would happen if a tsunami hundreds of feet high struck the Pacific coast? According to some earthquake researchers, this nightmare scenario is more than just a distant possibility. Experts have been studying a seismic time bomb buried deep along the Cascadia subduction zone, a fault line that runs from Northern California to British Columbia. And when it ruptures, the results could be devastating. Today, we're taking a closer look into the growing concerns about a possible mega tsunami triggered by a major earthquake. We'll explore new findings, expert warnings, and what this means for millions living along the U.S. West Coast. The Cascadia Subduction Zone, a ticking time bomb. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a 600-mile fault line off the Pacific Northwest Coast, where the Juan de Fuca Plate is slowly being forced beneath the North American plate. This hidden danger has the potential to unleash a magnitude 9.0 earthquake, one that could last several minutes and trigger a tsunami within minutes. The last known rupture occurred in January 1700 and sent waves all the way to Japan. Scientists say we are overdue for another. Unlike California's San Andreas Fault, which moves horizontally, the Cascadia Fault is a megathrust fault, capable of lifting the ocean floor and displacing a massive amount of water. What makes this zone particularly dangerous is its silence. It doesn't produce many small quakes, which means pressure is quietly building. In recent years, seismologists have used ocean floor sensors, GPS data, and computer simulations to better understand what might happen if the zone ruptures. Most agree on one thing. When the next big one hits, the coastal towns of Washington, Oregon, and Northern California could face destruction on a scale few can imagine. Homes and infrastructure could be wiped out by ground shaking alone. Minutes later, a massive wave could crash ashore, giving residents very little time to escape. The Mega Tsunami Threat Tsunamis are not rare in the Pacific Ocean, but what scientists are warning about now is something far more severe than most people are prepared for. A mega tsunami, unlike the typical coastal flood, is triggered by a sudden dramatic shift in the seafloor, exactly the kind of movement expected from a full rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone. Researchers say waves from such an event could reach heights of 100 feet or more in some areas, traveling at speeds close to 500 miles per hour. Low-lying coastal communities could be submerged within 15 to 30 minutes. A report by the Oregon Seismic Safety Policy Advisory Commission paints a stark picture. Tens of thousands could die. Hundreds of thousands could be displaced. Key infrastructure like bridges, highways, and power lines might be lost for months. One FEMA official quoted in The New Yorker said, Our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. The scenario isn't speculation. It's based on real geological records and computer models. Adding to the concern is new research exploring the idea of a possible Culebra event, a rare but plausible scenario where cascading faults could combine forces and trigger an even larger quake. Some researchers, like Brent Dmitruk, warn that in rare cases, these quakes could reach magnitude 10. While this idea is controversial, it's helping experts reassess the worst case outcomes and consider whether our current evacuation plans are realistic for the size of the disaster predicted. Warnings from the scientific community. Over the past two decades, concern about Cascadia has moved from the fringe to the mainstream of geological research. The work of scientists like Chris Goldfinger, a marine geologist at Oregon State University, has helped shape public understanding of the threat. Goldfinger has spent years studying core samples from the ocean floor, which show layers of disturbed sediment, evidence of past megathrust earthquakes. His findings suggest that the full length of the fault has ruptured roughly every 300 to 500 years. Some segments rupture more frequently. Goldfinger's research reveals at least 41 significant earthquakes in the last 10,000 years, and 19 of those were full margin events, meaning they ruptured the entire fault. The last full margin event in 1700 devastated indigenous communities in the region and sent waves across the Pacific to Japan. The takeaway from Goldfinger's work is chilling. The next event 
could come at any time. In his words, if you're waiting for someone to tell you when to worry about Cascadia, that's not going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's when. Other scientists agree. Catherine Schultz's 2015 article in The New Yorker brought widespread attention to the threat, quoting FEMA officials and geologists alike. It painted a sobering picture of a region largely unprepared for a catastrophe of this scale. Even with modern modeling and improved emergency planning, the sheer speed and force of a Cascadia-generated tsunami would leave little room for effective large-scale evacuation, especially in rural coastal communities. How prepared are we? Really? Despite growing awareness, the West Coast remains vulnerable. While some towns in Oregon and Washington have invested in tsunami evacuation towers and improved signage, many low-lying areas still lack accessible routes to high ground. Emergency preparedness efforts vary wildly by region. Cities like Seattle and Portland are better equipped than smaller coastal towns like Seaside or Crescent City, but none are truly ready for an event of this scale. A major concern is infrastructure. Bridges, hospitals, and power stations in the tsunami hazard zone were not built with a magnitude 9.0 earthquake in mind. Schools and public buildings may collapse or flood, cutting off evacuation centers. In Oregon alone, over 1,000 public schools are considered seismically unsafe. The Oregon Resilience Plan estimates it could take up to three years to restore drinking water and electricity to the hardest hit areas. Roads and highways might be unusable for months, trapping survivors and delaying rescue efforts. Even emergency messaging systems face limitations. In the event of a Cascadia rupture, the shaking would begin offshore, followed by the tsunami within 15 to 30 minutes. That leaves very little time for official alerts to reach everyone, especially those asleep or without access to rapid warnings. Communities must rely heavily on local planning, practice drills, and personal preparedness. Yet, studies suggest many residents living in danger zones are unaware of the full risk or assume the big one is still far off. Brent Dimitruk and the Culebra event theory. One of the more provocative voices in earthquake research today is Brent Dimitruk. His theory, detailed in a Medium article, proposes a rarely discussed but deeply alarming idea, a possible magnitude 10 earthquake event he calls the Culebra event. According to Dmitruk, such a quake could result from multiple subduction zones triggering simultaneously in a sort of chain reaction. In his model, this could happen across the Pacific, starting with a rupture near Japan and setting off activity across the Cascadia subduction zone and even parts of Alaska's subduction systems. Though not widely accepted by the mainstream scientific community, Dimitruk's scenario is built on observed patterns and the theoretical limits of plate tectonics. A magnitude 10 quake would release roughly 30 times more energy than a 9.0, potentially causing a tsunami that dwarfs the already catastrophic projections tied to Cascadia alone. Dimitruk warns that, while rare, these types of connected seismic events may have occurred in ancient times and left behind clues in geological records. He argues that the increasing activity observed across the Pacific Ring of Fire could point toward a buildup in global seismic energy. Even if the Culebra event never comes to pass, Dimitruk's work has drawn attention to how little we truly know about the full range of seismic possibilities. It also pushes the conversation beyond regional planning and into global cooperation. In a world where an undersea quake in one nation's waters can send disaster thousands of miles away, seismic monitoring and disaster readiness can't stop at national borders. Tsunami evacuation and public awareness. If an earthquake were to rupture the Cascadia subduction zone tomorrow, the most important factor determining survival would be time. In many coastal areas, residents would have less than 20 minutes to get to safety after the shaking begins. But for some communities, the window is even smaller. That's why tsunami evacuation routes, warning sirens, and public drills are so important, and in many places, still lacking.
Oregon has started building vertical evacuation structures, especially in towns where there's no natural high ground nearby. One such example is a reinforced gymnasium in the town of Westport, designed to hold hundreds of people above the projected wave height. Washington State has followed suit with some pilot projects. Still, for the vast stretch of coastline affected, most towns rely on roads that might be impassable after a quake, especially if bridges are damaged or blocked by debris. Education plays a major role. Some school districts have incorporated tsunami drills and evacuation plans, but many residents in high-risk areas either don't know the risks or assume they'll have more warning than they actually will. Outreach efforts are growing, with scientists and emergency managers holding town hall meetings and publishing easy-to-read guides. But those efforts compete with public apathy, budget constraints, and infrastructure challenges. Even in well-informed communities, reaching tourists remains a problem. Many of the coast's most vulnerable areas are vacation hotspots. Short-term visitors may not be familiar with evacuation signs or warning signals. In a real event, the lack of clear instructions could cost lives. Raising awareness across all groups, residents, businesses, tourists, is one of the most urgent challenges facing state and local governments. The New Yorker's wake-up call and FEMA's stark prediction. In 2015, the New Yorker published an article titled The Really Big One that shook many readers out of complacency. Written by journalist Katherine Schultz, the piece pulled together scientific findings, first-hand interviews, and FEMA data to paint a grim picture of what a full Cascadia rupture could bring. The article quickly went viral, and for good reason, it made the science tangible. It explained not only the mechanics of the fault line, but what it would look and feel like when the shaking begins, what happens in the minutes that follow, and how unprepared much of the West Coast truly is. One of the most quoted lines in the article came from FEMA's Kenneth Murphy, who said, our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. That single sentence drove home the severity of what a Cascadia megaquake could cause. Interstate 5 is not right on the coast. It's miles inland in many places. And yet the expectation is that cities, bridges, ports, and nearly every structure closer to the ocean would be destroyed or severely damaged, not just by the tsunami, but by the quake itself. The article explained how the soil in many cities like Portland and Seattle could liquefy, swallowing homes and roads. It predicted tens of thousands of deaths, mass displacement, and a long-term loss of basic services. Hospitals would be overwhelmed, and emergency crews would be stranded without working roads. The article didn't just alarm, it shifted how policymakers and the public talked about earthquake risk. School boards reevaluated their building codes. City councils reconsidered development plans. It was the rare piece of journalism that sparked real action, but only in some places. In many towns, things haven't changed much at all. Now it's time to hear from you. Are you worried about this tsunami? Let us know in the comments section below.